Um, I'm going to go ahead and transition over to the big boxing match tonight between Devin the Dream Haney and Vasil, <clears throat> Vasily the Matrix Lomachenko tonight on ESPN plus pay-per-view. Be there, be squares. This is a big fight. This is for Undisputed at 135 pounds. Undisputed lightweight crown. Devin Haney has all four of the belts that he won against George Cambosis Jr. twice. He, he beat Cambosis for the belts and then won a rematch. And now Vasily, after coming back from fighting in Ukraine, he's getting his shot, probably the biggest shot of his career, to be undisputed at 135. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, before I get into that, let's one more comment. Um, Jamie said, what free agent guards are available? Of course, Lola, but who else? Uh, that's going to be a good question. I have to really do my research and read into that, but I will talk about that on the next episode. Um, but back to the boxing here. You know, let's go go ahead and look at the, um, the tail of the tape and, and look at everything surrounding this fight, okay? You're talking about Lomachenko, a living legend in his own right, who's moved up multiple weight classes from 126, beast down there, 130. Washing niggas at 130, 135, not getting people out of there, making them quit at the same rate, but still, still, still getting good, solid wins and showing that he's a pound for pound fighter. All right. Going against Devin Haney, who's new money. Let's be real. He came out of nowhere. I mean, obviously, there's been rumblings of his name on, as he's come up through the ranks, but he came out of nowhere to grab all four belts in short order out of nowhere. Right. So. Let's go ahead and look at the tail of the tape here. Devin Haney, 29 0. Um, I think like 15 knockouts. 5'8, 71 inch reach. Fights orthodox, only 24 years old. And he's just, he's not even in his prime, in my opinion. He's just starting to even approach his prime right now. And he's going against Vasil Lomachenko, legend, living legend. 17 wins, two losses. One of those losses being. Um, very sketchy decision loss to Orlando Salido, who came in heavy as hell, missed weight, and was fighting dirty. And then one loss. Um, damn, I can't remember who's... Oh, Teofimo Lopez. Again, won his big fights at 135 against a bigger guy, and Teo was able to edge it. Um, 35 years old, fighting South Paul, five, stands 5'7", five, so about near the same height as Haney, but... He has a six inch uh, reach disadvantage against Devin Haney at 65 and a half inches on his reach. And then even when you when you look at these guys in the weigh ins, and I'm gonna get more into the weigh in because it was fireworks yesterday actually. When you when at the weigh ins and the press conferences when they're facing off, it is clear that Devin Haney is the bigger guy. Like make no mistake about that. Like he is he's not huge, but he is compared to Lomachenko, right? So you have these two guys going into a clash right now. And the storyline has been, Lomachenko's been kind of cool, calm, collected. You know, he has that killer mentality, like that ice grill. He don't really show no emotion, doesn't really get shaken. Um, and then you have Devin Haney, who's usually even kill, very respectful, you know, represents Islam very well, but in the lead up to this fight, he's been acting out of character. Like I think part of it is selling the fight, which I understand, but part of it is just uncharacteristic of what we've seen out of Devin Haney in his career up to this point. You know, he's been talking about, hey, Loma's a dirty fighter, and then when Loma asked him, he's like, You punching on the break. It's like, nah, he ain't punching when the referee's not telling him to. He's just like, when you break, he he throwing punches. It's like, I don't even know, you're trying to make something out of nothing. And then at the press conference um, yesterday at the weigh-in, they both weighed in, made weight, Loma at 135, Devin Haney at 134.9. And then they had their face off, and Loma was just looking at him with this, this smug, confident expression that he always has, just like, I, you know what time it is, you know what we're here for. And Devin Haney, he's sitting there, and he starts chirping and talking about, yo, you too small. I'm going to break you up. I'm going to bust you up in the ring. And then he takes all his force and pushes Lomachenko backwards. Like, really all the force he had. And it came out of nowhere. It was unprovoked. I don't really... Out of character. You're trying to sell... If you're trying to sell tickets, uh, you, you, congratulations. <laughs> Mission accomplished. But I don't really understand the purpose of doing that. You could have sold tickets 
in other ways besides that. And he's actually getting a petition filed against him by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for that push yesterday. And if you get a chance, go over to Top Brain Boxing on YouTube or even look up FightHype.com, uh, Seconds Out, any of those channels. And go ahead and look at the clip of them facing off yesterday at the weigh-in and just see how out of pocket that was. All right? I've, I've seen people get, get physical and, and, and get chippy and whatnot, but like it was unprovoked. It didn't really make much sense to me. It, it seems like a guy that's trying to psych himself up for this fight, which I don't know why he would need to at this point. It's one of the biggest moments of his career, and he has all four belts. What more motivation do you need <laughs> right? against a guy who is obviously not trying to provoke you this whole time all right so that being said you know check that video out but you know let's go ahead and look at the tail of the tape going into here who they fought in the last six fights um and then look at the different attributes and then who i think is going to win so you go ahead and look at Devin haney last six fights starting from 2019 back in november fought alfredo santiago just a guy don't know him your york is gamboa in November of 2020 during lockdown, Gambo was a faded fighter. I mean, look, I have much respect for him, but at this point, you know, in the past four or five years, he's been a faded fighter. So, and he got a unanimous decision. I mean, he should have wiped the floor with him, but you know, uh, whatever. Then he had a fight against Jorge Linares in May, Memorial Day weekend of 2021. He had a good one there, but that was a tough fight. And I remember, I don't know if it was round five, six, seven, whatever, he got hit by it might have been like a straight left by Lenars. I don't remember the punch, but he got hit flush and he got shook up something serious. And he was very fortunate it was near the end of the round or Lenars might have got him up out of there. Lenars being a very, very good fighter, uh perennial title contender, uh somebody who who lost to Loma as well. So Lenars has fought both of these guys. And he gave Devin Haney problems, but that was a, a good test for him. It built metal. It 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 helped him to see what a, a real puncher is at 135. He got buzzed a little bit and he came back and handled business, all right? And then later that year, he fought Jojo, G D Jojo Diaz, another very, very good t uh, fighter. Always been on the fringe of being a title contender, but never was able to get over the cusp. So similar to um, Pauli Malignaggi, and even though Sean Porter had a belt, um, he's also similar to, um, well, I'd say more like uh, Pauli Malignaggi. Always on the cusp, but never able to get over that that um that hump um had a tough fight against jojo diaz who's very crafty but very good win over him and then he had the opportunity to fight george cambosis who i'm going to come back to cambosis because he beat lomachenko to get no he beat teofima lopez to get three of the four belts and devin haney had the fourth belt he went down to australia on his lonesome, went there, got the job done in 2022, got all four belts to be undisputed. I think the youngest undisputed champ at 135 and maybe one of the youngest undisputed champs ever, I think. All right. And then he came back later that year. He fought him in June of 2022. And then in October of 2022, went back down to Australia and fought him again in a rematch and beat him again convincingly. All right, with all the hoopla surrounding, trying to get his dad into the country or whatnot, he still went down there and got it done. Came back with all four belts. I still got it, right? So he's he's certainly had a meteoric rise in his last, I would say, four fights against some quality opponents. Nobody that's tip top of the mountaintop, but very, very tough opponents. And I think that's molded him into a better fighter over the past two years. Now, switching over to Loma, we look at his last six fights. 2019, right um, the year before lockdown, fought Anthony Croya, knocked him out, easy work, nothing crazy there, fought Luke Campbell, who gave Ryan Garcia problems, and he beat him pretty soundly. Uh, then he fought Teofilo Lopez in 2020, and he moved up to 135, I believe, for that, and he lost his belt there. Um, I guess Teofilo Lopez. Very, very good fight. Teofilo Lopez came out and dominated i would say five out of the first six rounds and then in the second half Tate, uh loma started putting the pressure on him he was on his head whooping his ass and then 
Teo was able to dig down deep and win round 12, and that's why I thought he won. Otherwise, it should have been a draw, and Loma would have kept his belts. All right, but still a very good fight. And I think the start of some of the issues that we've seen him have at 135, I think this is not a step too far, but he wanted to challenge himself, and he is challenging himself at 135, for sure. Because these dudes is not playing. They're bigger guys, and they're not going to go down by many of the shots he's throwing. He might beat him to F up, but he's not going to knock him out. All right. So he took a year off, uh, took like six months off after that. And then he came back in 2021 and fought uh, Masayoshi Nakatani. Very, very tall, sturdy built Japanese fighter who never gets stopped. He is a tank moving forward. And he, he beat him by stoppage, beat that man down. Highly impressive. Okay. Kind of like reminds me of what we saw with Manny Pacquiao versus Antonio Margarito. Way bigger guy, way uh, heavier, who was able to completely break him down utterly and and uh, decisively just shut his ass down. Then he comes back later in that year in December, fights Richard Kami. Richard Kami, very, very good fighter, but at that point, I think he was over the hill. I think he was a little bit past it. And he dominated Richard Kami to the point that it might have been round seven or eight. He turned to Kami's, Kami's uh, corner and said, yo, y'all need to stop the fight. Like, he didn't want to continue doing what he was doing. But, you know, that was a very, very solid win nonetheless. Okay? And then his latest fight at 135 against Jermaine Ortiz. Very, very um, active young fighter. Big, strong, fast. The experience isn't there yet, but he's he has all the tools. Everything's in the toolbox there. And he had a tough time. I think he just barely beat Jermaine Ortiz. Like, I think in the second, second half of the fight, I'd, I'd say he won by two rounds, one or two rounds. But it was a tough, tough fight. He was landing a lot of shots, but Ortiz got Loma's respect early. And he was able to land a lot of shots. And um, it was a tough go. Unanim unanimous decision, but it was a tough go against Jermaine Ortiz. All right? But I think that fight and the Nakatani fight and the Teo fight, they gave Loma a sense of what the power is of the 135, all right? And against guys that were bigger with longer reaches and reaches that are similar, if not a little bit uh, longer than what Devin Haney's is. I mean, look at Nakatani. Uh, his reach is 71 as well, right? He's 5'11 with a 71-inch reach, and he was able to get him up out of there, right? So he got a little taste of what it's like to fight guys of that size. Again, Jermaine Ortiz, 5'8", 69-inch reach. Similar to um, Devin Haney. And he blew up in weight come fight night after the weigh-in, just like Devin Haney's going to be. So he, he got a taste of what it's like to face a guy that, that's uh, that that jacked. All right? So they, they've both been very active leading up into this fight. And they, they're, they've they been on the collision course for years. All right? So let's go ahead and, and, and look at some of the, the attributes and, and and break down this fight here. So you're looking at a guy in Devin Haney, um, young fighter, uh, Vasily Lomachenko, amateur experience and pedigree is just ridiculous as well as his time in the pros. So you're going to start out looking at speed. So um, right now you have Vasily Lomachenko, who even though he's 35, he's a naturally smaller guy. So that speed is, and I'm speaking from as somebody who's um, who's around the same size. I'm, I'm like 5'9", 5'10". Um, weigh like a buck, buck fifty and some change, and compared to guys that are one seventy, one eighty, two hundred, your speed is one of the last things to go. As long as you're taking care of yourself, your speed is one of the last things to go when you're a, a smaller guy. All right, the power might go first, but the speed, ironically, will be there. And I think the inverse is true for some of the heavier guys. The Speed goes first, but the power is always there. You always have a puncher's chance. So, I mean, case in point, look at George Foreman. Slow as an ox. But when he landed, when he was 45 years old, he could still send you into a coma. Speed left, but the power is still there. All right? Versus Devin Haney, young, in his prime, fresh legs, um, very, very good hand speed, very, very good jab. I think this is, this is even. I don't really see much of a speed difference between the two guys. I think this is a push there. So I'm, I'm going to say this is a tie for, for speed. Then next, we're going to move on, move on to power. 
And this is where Devin Haney is clearly going to have more power. Even though he is not a big puncher at 135, he still has more power than Haney at this weight class on top of being the naturally bigger guy. So I'm going to give the, uh, the nod to Haney in the power department. Now moving next, we're going to go to footwork. And here is where Loma shines. You can see it in the amateur experience. You can see it in the professional experience. He has a way of changing angles, flanking his opponents in ways that we have not seen outside of uh, Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, um, Sugar Ray, like guys like that, you know, guys that are really just, the lateral movement is just ridiculous, All right? Versus Haney, he has good feet, but that is not his strength in comparison to Lomachenko. So Lomachenko gets denied there with footwork. Fourth is going to be, excuse me, ring generalship and ring IQ. And that is going to go slightly to uh, Vasil Lomachenko. He's seen everything. There's no style that he hasn't seen. I mean, you're talking about a guy with over 300 amateur fights. He's seen every style there is to see, as well as he's seen many styles at the pro ranks across multiple weight classes. I don't think you're going to throw anything at Lomachenko that he hasn't seen before. And with Devin Haney being a master of the jab at this level, he doesn't have... He's crafty, don't get me wrong. And we saw it in his last fight against Cambosis. You know, he'd be sitting him up, you know, throw a jab, throw a jab, and then he'll throw the jab, hold it out there, and then come underneath with a straight right to the body or a hook to the body. Like, he's very crafty. Okay, he's good at breaking the guard, but he's not, he can't do what Lomachenko does. Lomachenko is, I say, top five all times in terms of being crafty. Like, moving left to right, hand up, pull a little bang, then move over. He's over here. You're looking over there. Like, you don't know where the fuck this guy is from moment to moment. So, uh, ring generalship, ring IQ, I would give the guy to Lomachenko, even though Devin Haney is very, very uh, good IQ-wise, very sharp. The next one there is going to be X Factor, all right? And here's where I give the nod to Haney because I just think that going on the road, whether you're fighting for a title or not, to somebody's backyard is very, very difficult, no matter what sport you talk about. Football, baseball, hockey, basketball, boxing, MMA, doesn't matter. You're in somebody's backyard, the pressure is on you. And then on top of that, you're fighting for belts. And you're going into a situation where you have a couple people in your corner and then the rest of the world is against you. And then you go in there and not only do you win, but you dominate and you take all the belts. You know, it's the stakes are as high as they get. They don't get any higher than that. And then not only do you do that, but you come back six months later and say, you know what? Everybody wants to say they're the A-side. He said, F it. I have all the belts, but I'll come back to Australia to fight you, Okay. Call your rematch clause. We don't have to go back to the U.S. I'll come right back down under to Australia and run this back. I'll run that fade back. And not only did he do it, but he dominated him again and said, hey, let there be no questions about who is the pound for pound undisputed at 135. So having that experience versus what we've seen at Loma, where he's looked very, very good in his last three or four fights, but you've seen the impact that the size disparity has had on him in the ring. And he's beginning to hit more. You've seen him be a little bit more tentative. Like, he don't really turn the gas on until a little bit later once he gets a feel for the power. All these little things make a difference. They add up. Which is why I think Devin Haney, though not, he's skilled, but he's not as skilled as Loma. However, he is the bigger guy with enough skill to be able to give serious promise to Lomachenko, okay? Lomachenko, he's going to get his off. He's going to lay leather on Haney in ways that I don't think Haney is used to or that he's anticipating. However, Haney is going to be able to land enough shots, in my opinion, to get Loma's respect and make him think like, ah, I don't want to make too many chances or I, I really have to go above and beyond in terms of the wrist department to try to beat this guy, all right? When you have to take more risk than is usual, then it leaves you open 
to getting hit with shots that you normally would never get hit with. So I, I think that Haney is going to be able to win a tough fight against Lomachenko. And that's my, my final prediction. Um, just because the size disparity is going to somewhat negate the, uh, the, the skill that Loma has over him, as well as the experience factor. Experience can only take you so far before you start to lose in the speed department or power department or age starts to catch up to you. Father Time is, is, is undefeated. A billion and O. Matter of fact, probably a trillion and O. You'll never beat Father Time. It's just about when is he going to come to collect his dues? Is it going to be this fight? Was it two fights ago? Or is it going to be two years from now? You don't know that. You never know the fight where you see somebody age in real time. So that being said, that's why I think Devin Haney is going to win this fight. However, I will say this much. He really kicked the hornet's nest by pushing Loma at that weigh-in when they were facing off. So even though I think he'll win, I think he's provoked Loma into putting a little more oomph on those punches. Once he, he gets them lined up, I think he's going to put a little more oomph, a little more anger into those punches. And it's going to be a much tougher fight than he... It's going to be a tough fight regardless, but he pissed this guy off for all intents and purposes when it was completely unnecessary. Doesn't mean you have to be friends or or act like he, you, you like the guy or buddy-buddy with him, but you don't have to go over the top like that to sell a fight or try to create some drama there when there is none. So that's the way I see it. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I'm picking Devin Haney to win um, by decision in a, in a very tough fight and retain his belts. Um, after the charades that happened yesterday, and I, I was neutral because I like both guys, but after the charades yesterday, I want Loma to win really badly. I just think that Devin Haney is going to have enough in the tank to be able to pull the win out. All right. So that's it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave your comments, questions, concerns. Um, for the YouTube viewers, um, this is the Facebook live stream. Uh, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, and um, I'll be back talking about this uh, uh, boxing moving forward, Sixers. Uh, we're going to get into the uh, the Eagles as we get closer and closer to the OTAs and, and training camp and whatnot. And that's what it is. So enjoy the fights tonight. Um, check it out on pay-per-view. And um, I'll catch you all later. Peace.